Hello, class. Welcome to the last lecture of any new material for chapter one, 1 1.6. I want to ask you a question that I'm not going to answer until we get together in class. This will be our discussion as we open the day talking about 1.6. But I want to ask you a question first. Which is worse, to censor kids' input or to censor kids' output? What I mean is, is it worse to control and se separate and segregate and discriminate about what kids can see, can be exposed to, which friends they can interact with, what shows they're allowed to watch, what internet sites they're allowed to go to, what time they're allowed to have their phone? Is it worse to censor their input or is it worse to censor their output? You're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to talk about this. You're not allowed to express yourself in this way. Which is worse? Now, I bet you have an opinion, and I have an opinion, and I am not going to tell you mine until we get together next time. So think about that censoring input and output. Today, we are going to talk about doing things to functions. Now, we've been doing things to functions. We've been adding and multiplying on the inside of f of x and on the outside of f of x. So we've got these function equations that we've been adding and multiplying. And now, we're going to add negatives and absolute values, both inside and outside. This is going to lead us to a short discussion about symmetry, which has got two vocabulary words that we need to know to be able to classify the symmetry in functions. So first of all, I would like you to get out your handy dandy TI here and put into your calculator this function. So what I'm saying is you're going to press y equals and you're going to do 2 to the x minus 2. And we can do zoom standard and take a look at that graph. Here are the data points that go with that. If you pick these particular x's, then you get these y's. And you can find these if you press second table on your calculator. And you can see then those exact values in the table of your calculator. And if you press graph, you get this graph. Now, this is going to be a very useful graph for our discussion because it's got no symmetry left, right, no symmetry up, down, a different x-intercept from a different y-intercept. Ooh, let's practice some of those vocabulary for the test. The domain, what's possible for x, is all real numbers. You can plug in any x. There's no limits on that. The range, what's possible for y, is y must be greater than negative 2 because there's what at y equals negative 2? There's what? There's what? An asymptote at y equals negative 2. And this exponential function, because x is in the exponent, so it's an exponential function, is a great example for us to uh, dink around with here. Let's fiddle with it, OK? So the first fiddling that I'd like to try is to say, what happens if we say f of negative x? This is something that you can practice looking at in your calculator by going to the y equals and saying in y2, we're going to have vars, move over to y vars function y1 of negative x. What's this going to do? Let's think about this here. When I plug in a particular x value, Whatever I've picked, it's going to flip to the opposite sign. Hmm. Plugging in x values is as if I plugged in an x value with the opposite sign. So plugging in 2 first, it gets turned into uh, its opposite sign, 2, and then that gets plugged into the function. 0 will be unaffected, but negatives will become positives, and positives will become negatives as far as the x is concerned. Aha! It flipped it left right. Negative x's are behaving just like the positive x's used to, and positive x's are behaving just like the negative x's used to. OK. So this is a reflection Left, right, Where's, what's the line right down the middle that we've reflected over? It's the y-axis, OK? So that's what putting a negative on the inside of our function does. 
What about putting a negative on the outside? So if I put that in the calculator, I want negative vars, y vars, y1 of x. What's this going to do? Well, I'm going to plug in my x. I'm going to run it through the mill of the function and get some particular outputs. But then I'm going to take all those outputs and flip them. The positive outputs will become negative. The negative outputs will become positive. So for example here, you can see that the x plugs in like normal. You get the y like normal. But then you flip that y before you graph it. So the function is going to be flipped top to bottom and bottom to top. It's, it's flipped this way, which is a reflection across the line that cuts right through the middle of everything, the x-axis. Okay, So that's what negative f of x does. Now, the absolute value is related to this. This is like doing the negative, except instead of flipping things, it only flips the negatives positive and leaves the positives untouched. So, so we can find this in the calculator. You may not know this. But if we press math and we move over one into the number category in that first choice there, ABS absolute value of vars, y vars, y1 of x. What's this going to do? We're going to calculate. We're going to pick some x's. We're going to calculate some y's. And then any of the y's that were negative get forced to become positive. So there is our graph. We've, we've flipped negative y's to become positive. Okay? So no negative y values are possible. Now, think about that. No negative y values are possible. Everywhere that would have been a negative y got forced to become positive. Last one of these kinds of things to consider is what if we put absolute value bars on x before it gets plugged into the function. So again, with the calculator, that's going to be vars, y vars, y1 of math num abs x. So that means we pick our x's. We can still pick every x. But then comes the censoring. Then comes turning negative x's into positive ones before they get plugged into the function. Negative x's, you plug them in, and they exhibit the exact same behavior as the positive x's. So we have forced the left half to look like the right. Now, this leads then to naturally saying some functions won't be affected by this. Which ones? The ones that were already symmetric left-right, like Scarlett Johansson, like Denzel Washington, these people who already have a left-right symmetry. Now, when we needed to have a name for this, mathematicians aren't very creative. They looked and said, well, what is a generic class of functions? Well, the generic class of functions turn out to be the power functions. They're pretty standard things. And they look alike. Half of them look alike, and the other half look alike. All the ones with x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, they all look like this. They all have this kind of U or V-shaped sort of thing going on. In the long run, they go up at both ends. And they are, if you don't do anything else, if it's not a crazy polynomial, but just y equals x squared, y equals x to the fourth, they are left-right symmetrics. All the power functions with even powers exhibit this behavior. So we're going to call this kind of left-right symmetry even symmetry. This is not very creative name, and you just have to think back to power functions. But now we're saying, this is kind of weird, we're used to calling numbers even and odd. Now we're saying you can call functions even. And I just gave it away. We're also then talking about odd functions that look like this. So you, you can think about this two different ways. You can either say we reflect left, right, and then top down. Uh, or we're saying that you can rotate it 180 degrees. Those are the same thing. But the point is the bottom left looks like the top right. They're flips or double flips of each other, rotations or double flips of each other. And so we're going to call this kind of symmetry odd symmetry.
Functions can be even or odd, just like numbers can. So, informal definition, even means left-right symmetry. Denzel Washington, Scarlett Johansson, these kind of perfectly mirrored faces that people have. But the formal definition is to say that for every x, f of x is the same as f of negative x. Doesn't matter if you plug in a positive number or a negative number, you would get the same result. This is what they all sort of look like then, with that left-right symmetry. Odd means that it doesn't matter if you plug in something from the negative side as long as you then flip it up. That the left side looks like the right side, but flipped upside down. So that's the formal definition of odd symmetry. I would like for you to come to class next time with problem number one, parts A through D done, and then we can go over this some more and have that discussion about when we censor functions and kids. See you around.